episode of the vlog. This week is the question and answer section. Like I, I put up a poll on the question box on my Instagram and we are gonna go through some of the questions that you've been asking about me and what my journey's been like in all areas. So I'm trying to do this on a low battery on a vlog so this might have to be recorded into two sections but we'll go give it a go anyway. So I'm gonna put the questions here as they go through so you just don't forget. So I'm gonna rattle this through. Best destination that you've been to in 2019? Probably Rio de Janeiro, the, the sunrise, the ability to go to the beach every single day, uh, the, the, the South American culture, it wins every single time, so best destination Rio de Janeiro. Best wonder of the world. That's definitely gotta be the Great Wall of China. If to walk down it, understand the history, to be in China in, in itself is 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 the, the wonder in it in itself. Getting there, driving there, walking across it, so it's phenomenally long as well. It's mental what they did. It's just gotta be that. Where did you go to university and what did you study? So for me, I went to a university in Middlesex, uh, North London, uh, Hendon, Golders Green area, and I studied a degree in sports rehabilitation and injury management which effectively was my kind of go-to towards not being a physiotherapist because I wanted to be a physio, but I didn't end up uh, having the grades to do it. So I went to BTEC at, at, at college because I failed my AS levels. Then I went to do a sports rehabilitation degree because I wanted to help people and start working in like rugby or therapy sessions or therapy clinics. Uh, and that was kind of how I transitioned into that. How did you get into PT? So after doing that rehabilitation degree, I then tried to find a job as a rehabilitation therapist, but there wasn't many. Uh, it's very, very difficult to get into the industry, and it's really hard to get a full-time job in that gaff. So uh, I ended up doing PT on the side, as well as working for a rugby team, a clinic, and a, and a and Harold Private School. I did all of those together, but working four jobs when I was 22, uh, just trying to make it out and live in London, and afford to live in London, while I was trying to get as much experience as possible. So I worked at Nuffield uh, in Morgan Stanley in, in Canary Wharf, where they had the gym at the bottom, and we just trained people in there uh, for North, Nuffield, got taught how to roll towels and spent a lot of time hiding from rolling towels and, and reading research and that was kind of how I did things for those couple of years. wasn't particularly a great uh, PT at that point but I was just getting into the industry, paying my bills and learning a lot along the way. So what are the travel plans for this year which is another question. So we have just spoke last night about some extra plans as well so uh, Mexico which is for me is going to be next week for you guys it's going to come out next week so uh, I'll probably be in Mexico when this comes out or I'll be going there in two days time then uh, six weeks in Mexico then we go uh, to Vegas for three days uh, we're going to have some time off in Vegas have some time off in Miami or, or Orlando and then we're going to travel back to Dubai spend six weeks seven weeks in Dubai getting some visas done uh, I'm setting up a separate, separate business with uh, Adam, so we're going to be getting another business account there, so that's going to be exciting to go through all that rigmarole again. Then we're going to fly to Belgrade and Serbia, and then we're going to do probably April to July in Croatia, uh, Dubrovnik, uh, Split, and and Serbia, and then see where else we can go in that type of Eastern Bloc area. Um, you know, there's Sofia, there's... Uh, there's Montenegro, there's Croatia, there's Greece, wherever we want to go to in that sense. So that'll be that. And then from July, we'll be back in the UK for a week to just do photo shoots and it's my 30th. And then we'll be flying to Bali. And then we'll do three months in Bali and then see what happens there. But that's kind of the plans that we have for that time period already. Nothing's booked past Mexico, but we'll see what happens as we go. What would you do differently in the last three years? So in the last three years, I've transitioned fully online as a personal trainer, traveled the world, started my own business, and moved to Dubai for the second time. So I think probably the, 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 the things I would do differently in the last three years would probably be know my worth. Um, you know, when I was working at the company that I worked with before, uh, I was the head of trainers, coaching people, uh, help, helping other coaches, you know, get their own clients and get the business to a really, really good position. Managing 10 people at one point, uh, we were all over the world, man handling 80 to 100 clients, each of us. Um, so it was a lot, of, lot, lot of man management. And looking back on it, I was too cheap in my, in my ability to, to ask what I wanted for, 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 for salary, which made me unhappy because I was putting a lot of work in without min much minimal uh, monetary um, um, feedback. Uh, I love my job, loved everything about it, but just um, when you're putting a lot of work in 60 hours a week and you're not getting paid to the, to the, to the levels that you want to, uh, it was definitely know my worth. So I probably would have went out on my own earlier. One of the limiting beliefs that I had when I was younger, uh, even into my 20s and even you know going into this now 29, 30, uh, it was only until the last year that I really proved to myself, which is a valuable point, is that you have to prove to yourself that you're not what you think you are. Uh, is that I was always a great number two. So I'd always been a uh, best personal trainer in, in London, but I was always working under a company uh, where I was the head coach uh, of the gym. 
but I'd always be number two. I'd be assistant manager, or I would be, you know, uh, best trainer, but not the not the owner. Um, and I never thought I'd be the owner uh, of of a business. Never thought I'd be a really really clear number one CEO style role. Uh, and that's why I would do differently. I would take upon myself to go and do that role very very quickly. Uh, learn that learning curve and excel the way that I probably have done um, and that will probably come you know at some point I'll, I'll, I'll learn that again and I think if if I, if I was doing it again 26 25 would have been the years that I would have went out on my own and learned this learning curve and got to where I am right now but earlier that would have been really really nice favorite meals at the moment so because because uh, Darren's got me on a meal plan uh, we don't really deviate from it that much uh, I would probably say that my meals of the day like me and it probably my breakfast on training days is uh, 70 grams of cream of rice, 100 grams of fruit and uh, some whey protein. That's really, really nice, but the best one has got to be post uh, pre-bed uh, meal six of, of training day, which is uh, 400 grams of uh, some soy yogurt, because uh, I found out I'm not doing great with dairy at the moment. Uh, my skin is coming out on rashes and all sorts. Um, 40 gram, uh, 400 grams of yogurt, 200 grams of berries or like fruits and at the moment in time I'm loving cranberries and the sourness of those which is just phenomenal and then I'm doing like you know, 30 grams of granola or about 50 grams of cereal and I'm normally choosing the cereal so that's um, that's really really guys that's so nice but then in terms of like my favorite cuisine uh, which is another question is there's a few of them like because I'm going to Mexico I'm like getting the idea of Mexican food it's just phenomenal tacos burritos nachos uh, quesadillas um, that is that's phenomenal ceviche, but I think it, all time favorite has got to be, but got to be Indian. Like the the food, the, the the textures, the taste, the crunch, the sweetness, the the heat, um, the the loveliness that goes into your mouth, the multiple choices that you've got for different meats and vegetarian options, and the uh, the, the starters. When you deep, when you dive deep into the Asian culture, you've got the dokri, you've got the samosas, you've got all of these other things that nobody sees uh, that they can't get from a traditional Indian place uh, in somewhere in North England. Whereas if you have to go to the you have to go to the real good places in, in, in London to really experience proper Indian food or go to the houses, which I've definitely had fortunate ability to do so. Dabeli is one of my favourite foods uh, and uh, Chevro, which is the um, basically the snack that is basically Bombay mix, but way, way better. So definitely Indian food is up there. Um, and sushi, sushi is the easy one, it goes down easy, the soy sauce, the rice, the sashimi, tuna, the avocado, all of it's phenomenal. A bit of udon noodles and uh, mizu soup is just it's just great. So yeah, they're my favorite two cuisines. What's your daily clothing choices? Now, today is a, is a bit of a different one. I've, I've, I've tried to express myself a little bit in this little cheeky number that's a, um, that's a bit of camouflage. So I don't know, I think, it's, I, think I look quite, Good in it. It's like a, this is a, a medium. My size is coming through already, which is I've got another vlog next week, which is about how my muscle building phase is going on. But generally, my, my day-to-day stuff is just a pair of shorts or tracksuit bottoms, probably no socks, and uh, an oversized T-shirt, a a vest, and or um, one of the fluffy jackets that keep you warm over the top. Like that's really it, and some flip-flops. Um, when I be going to Mexico or hotter countries, it's just a vest, shorts, or an oversized t-shirt and shorts. I'm one of these guys that has got a lot and lot, a lot of cheap clothes, but some very expensive stuff as well, like three, four good, great going out t-shirts, some suits and pants, but then the rest of it is just a uh, cheap shit from like Boohoo or ASOS. So you'll find me with like three very good stuff, maybe three t-shirts that are really good that are going out, maybe one shirt, and then the rest of it are just cheap stuff. I mean, I would go like maybe once or twice a year onto ASOS, Put the budget down to under five pounds and get as many vests and as many t-shirts as like i need for that moment in time because there's no real point in buying expensive stuff for your day to day like i just sit at the, ha at the laptop or at a coffee shop don't need anything for anybody so and i buy that i wear the same shoes all of the time like i've got two pairs of shoes one of them that i'll repeat all of the time it's the vans the classic vans that i just have the white bit and black I just have them and then when the, when that kind of gets old or it's or the, the broken or the, the rusty or whatever I'll just get a new pair and get the same ones. Like there's no no changes there at all. In terms of next uh, question, which is top three learnings ever. I think my top one, or my biggest learning ever, is that everything should be a learning. There is no failure. There's no little bits of, you know, the world has ended. Like I had to learn this one quite late on. I always thought I needed to be perfect or I needed to have everything till I'm enough. Um, but it's just everything is a learning. Everything is a process. Uh, number two, the second biggest learning that I had is that practice is all we have. We can only practice and get better. We can only practice more. We can only put stuff out and improve on it, get something in play, and then make that happen. And then my biggest, my third learning 
is probably that uh, within myself, my third learning is that uh, I implement fast and I'm a very quick to to kind of jump on quite make uh, creative really really fast. So I create things really really quick. I take action very very quick and I um, leave I make decisions really quick as well. So that, that's my probably my third biggest learning and like. It's really, you have to learn what you're like as an individual. You don't have to change it all the time. You just have to learn how to, you know, if that's a positive, you know, me, you know, making fast decisions, me making ideas really fast, me being super, super creative uh, and problem solving very quickly. I have to understand what the negative of that is. So for me to be able to do this, I also need people to support me in different ways. If I make stuff really, really creative, I get sidetracked by that, then I give it to someone else to finalize it and finish it off. Like I'm not a complete finisher, although my mum would tell me that I need to be. I am a person that has great ideas at the beginning, does it 95% and then needs someone else to kind of finish that off because I get super, super enjoyment out of thinking, oh shit, uh, this is a great idea, let me go and do it and then let me just go and check it with someone else afterwards. So it's about learning who you are and not always changing it. Like if you're someone that is a, a perfectionist, you can still be a perfectionist and be successful. You just have to understand what parameters you have to work in. You know, for perfectionists, I often say to those people, it's like, okay, you've got two days to make it perfect. After the two days, you've made it as no, as good as perfect as possible, get it out and then just repeat that process and try and be, you know, the person that you are. And I've really embraced that quick to decisions, you know, making super, super quick creative stuff, um, you know, put my life on hold and just doing one thing at a time and really embrace that. And it's always been a, a win for me. So that's definitely my big three learns. The practice one is just... What, can, what else can you do apart from you know bitch and moan about the certain things you just get better if you have a shit day or you make a shit decision you just don't make a worse one next time you learn from it tip number one tip number two is that you practice it getting better and that's all you can do so that's all i've ever done is that you know most so, some of my stuff has spelling mistakes in it. some of my stuff is not fa done with a fine tooth comb some of my videos are ears theirs is and, and even these vlogs like they're not perfect or well polished but i don't want them to be I want them to be practiced and you know video one is not as good as video five and video 10 is way better than video five so it's just about practice and getting better and learning from those as well what's the business goals for 2022 so i'm quite honest about all of the sides of business so finance the purpose that the business has and then the mission for the business and what we want to kind of improve inside of it so i'll break it down to those three areas one is the purpose of the business so i want to help you know 250 to 500 people over the next year you know we have the ability of we've you know for the first year we've helped you know 220 i think but i want this number to be on top of where we're at so by the end of the year i want to have in our books 250 people so that we've helped or we are helping at the moment in time so that's going to be really really big for us you know that's our big aim for 2022 is to get 250 more 100 like 200 more people into the business from where it is already to help those people if we if we go too fast and we try and get 500 in then the quality of our service is going to be really really poor and we don't get three people through to the six phases if we go too little we're not pushing ourselves to help other people when we've got this super big gift and financially that will just leave us in all in a good position that all of our coaches and myself will be financially free and we'll be able to do the things that we want to do one of the business goals slash for me goals personally is definitely going to be traveling the world again you know we, we're, i've already told you my travel plans for 2022 but you know at the end of 22 and into 23 i want to make sure that i'm in a good position to be able to you know have a good stable base in dubai uh for most of the year and have a luxury car like i just want to get i've talked about on the podcast i just want to see what it's like and feel to own a supercar so whether that's a lambo a mclaren or a ferrari it doesn't really matter to me because i'm not a car guy but you know when you dream about things and one of the questions that are going to come up in a minute will we'll tie into this as well when you dream about things or you come from a you know and not that type of mindset or or, or that type of place you know mum and dad have always worked hard for what they've what they've earned and they've never been you know private school type of people we've always been like a living paycheck to paycheck and maybe having one or two holidays a year caravan camping you know that type of stuff and they've always helped to give me everything that i wanted to and i was never in need of everything because you know they would you know mum had a master's dad was a teacher for a long time so that the the finances were were fine um but i want to experience this upper echelon this next level of what that means for me and my partner and for the people that we bring into the world later down the line and on our lifestyles you know so i want to be in a situation where we can do whatever we want to doing what we love and that's that's really really key because 
Most people have the finances, but don't have the purpose. Most people, some people have purpose, but they don't have the finances. And there's this fine balance between doing what you love and then trying to pay your mortgage, right? So we wanna make sure that for our family, whenever that happens, is that it's a case of we put ourselves in the best position to have what we want, but still do what we love. So that's that's kind of the goal. It's the goal, and 22 will be that year that we kind of really cross that boundary from a business perspective, uh, that it will be a case of we can have what we want and have what we, we, we desire. Um, and like I said, with the t-shirts and the, the, the clothing that I wear on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not a super, super like um, materialistic person. I've got one to three nice things. I'll spend more money on a Bloomin' Hotel or an Airbnb than I will do in terms of on a bag. Or I've got one nice bag, but I won't buy excess bags or you know, I've got two pairs of shoes to, to, to live with. So you know, those things are much more important to me. Experiences, time is really, really important. And 22 will be a year of buying some time back into my week, into my day, into my life, to be able to embrace and enjoy opposite sides of the business. Like the business is, uh, and actually, Mill asked me this question a couple of weeks ago. She said, what's the goal uh, for you personally of, of 2022? And I said, I want to, 2022 will be the year of the personal side of Nathan being more important than the business or the work side of Nathan. And I've never had that, you know, work or my purpose has always been the biggest part of my life, you know, for the last 30 years or let's say 15 years since I was 15 when I wanted to be a, a, a physiotherapist, I was doing work experience with my mum's team as a nurse and uh, osteos and all that type of stuff in the elderly community. I always wanted to help people and for the last 15 years, which is mental because it's 15 years, that's always been my focus. That's always been what I wanted to do. I'd put everything on the back burner and like three or four years ago, I found out that I had no personal life. I had no personal into, into me. I was just Nathan at work. Nathan trying to be a better PT, Nathan trying to be a better online coach. And then when the traveling started, that's when I started separating the two and, and making sure that I had some personal life and some not you know, overall knowledge as an individual, as opposed to just being you know the person that could one trip pony that could talk about fitness. So that was really, really important. And then the last question is, who are your biggest inspirations? And this is gonna be a big one for me. My laptop decided, laptop. And then my, um, camera decided to dive for the second time so we're back in a different spot today so we're still same clothes on got a little bit of a guest here um, and we are just going to finish off that last question from the Q&A which was which was who is my biggest inspiration so call me a mummy's boy but for the first like 20 years of my life you know my mum was the biggest inspiration she was the one that was grabbing the money doing a job that she loved coming home after eight ten hours a day you know working her socks off getting a master's degree when I was younger, she put herself in nursing uh, nursing school whilst I was a baby, and still did that whilst trying to, um, you know, take care of me as well. So that that was probably my biggest inspiration since you know, my early twenties. Uh, after then, with, that has always been like kind of my foundation um, of who I inspired to be. Um, and then after that, just making my chips with the air fryer. She's definitely not an inspiration video for a very very important announcement I want to invite you all to our Facebook group we have a six phase to forever Facebook group which is a part of our coaching process that is free that you can get lots and lots of value on a week-to-week -week basis I go live once a week there's plenty of content in there and there's always special bonus material if you're looking at getting in shape or how to and how to stay in shape forever so if you are wanting that the link will be here somewhere and then also it'll be in the description so guys see you there and you get to see my ugly mug on a week-to-week -week basis <laughs> The, the other two inspirations are someone that has challenged me consistently, has been a mentor to me, uh, and has been someone that I've always looked up to in the future. Uh, and he's always been that guy that has kind of bought things and experienced things, and it made me feel like I could do that too, which was Adam, uh, my business mentor. He's been just phenomenal, and uh, we're just really good friends, but it's been a really good ride. You know, I've seen him 10, 10 years ago now, probably, uh, being a PT, doing building what he's building right now, and he's helped me build what I've got as well. So someone that has always been like the, the, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde mentality and we've always done things together over the course of the last seven, eight years uh, in some way, shape or form. So he's a big inspiration and always encourages me to spend money. You know, I remember the one time that actually we first got our American Express uh, British Airways cards and we had a race to £10,000 to who could spend it first. We had that type of friendship and he's always kind of stayed the same uh, and he's always introduced me to new things and kind of uh, encouraging me to spend the money that I earn, which is great because uh, I'm more of a, uh, a hoarder or don't buy things or put my mind to buying things and just you know, spend it on whatever is in that moment in time. And then the last uh, person isn't a person, it's just a group of individuals. Like I've got a friendship group now that uh, and a group of like people that I work with 
uh, and uh, you know conversate with that are constantly motivating you like I don't think that there's one individual that kind of brings me up to a higher level it's a group of individuals and when you surround yourself with those individuals and you put yourself in an environment to, to, to work and learn and, uh, and grow that's when things really do start to happen so for us uh, for me it was definitely uh, just being part of other people that are doing this too uh, and then growing with those individuals you know having people like Mills next to me when we're working together is incredibly inspiring because actually she's a, she's a kick-ass uh, badass bitch um, business bird business bird yeah we'll call you a business bird um, and then working with her next to her is like you know we're both chomping at the bit progressing and building our businesses we use each other as a um, as sounding boards and just having people around you like that all the time just elevates you to be better and it's just like having that having that group of individuals that you're around when you when you you go and sit down with them it always comes out in positivity next steps what we're working towards and having a group like that is yeah, absolutely incredible so this was an episode of uh, the vlog a Q&A version uh, I'm going to go back to wearing my camouflage top uh, on its own and I will speak to you guys soon thank you for uh, if you got this far thank you for uh, watching like subscribe and then on to the next video next one is update on my uh, bodybuilding prep uh, for the muscle building phase we've now been working with Darren for eight to nine weeks some big big changes and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing with them next week and then the plans ahead for the year ahead uh, and what we're going to be looking at probably more of a break it down what we've been doing what's actually happened body weight metrics and that's gonna be really really cool because I'm looking stoked uh, and, and I think I'm looking much better than I was before. So we got a posing lesson very soon as well, which is going to be new for me. Glad I don't have to get the bikini and the heels for this one. Um, so guys, check me in the next video.